The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Brittany Warner here with realagriculture.com, hanging out at the Crop Diagnostic School just east of a Swift Current. Welcome back to another episode of our Canola School. We are joined now by Ken Wall. Ken is the Grow Team Advisor for Federative Cooperatives Limited. How's it going today, Ken? Great. You? Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us here today, talking about seed toxicity in our canola crops. You guys are running a few trials out here to kind of differentiate what is that prime application for nitrogen in the seed row. First and foremost, Ken, what are we talking about when we say seed toxicity? Well, when we're talking about uh, seed toxicity, we're actually talking about the toxicity of the fertilizer that we're putting with the seed, um, in, in this case, canola. Uh, canola is quite a bit more uh, sensitive than say the cereals are. Um, so for the brown soil zone, uh, the recommended rates from the SAS Ministry of Ag uh, site, um, they recommend with this, with, with, with this uh, row spacing and, and with these openers. So you talk about uh, SBU, which is seed bed utilization. Mm -hmm. And in this case, uh, with the drill that they used, they had a three quarter inch opener with eight and a quarter inch uh, row spacings. So it's about a 10% seed bed utilization. So with that, um, with those parameters, we're looking at about 10 or 11 pounds per acre uh, of actual N with the seed. And, and, that, and the actual N is important because uh, it depends what you're putting down with the seed. In this case, we're putting down urea. Uh, so in, in the guaranteed analysis of urea, urea is 46% uh, nitrogen and uh, no phos and, and no potassium. So um, not only do we have to worry about the toxicity uh, the, or the salt index of the fertilizer, in the case of urea, we also need to, to look at the byproduct of the bacterial breakdown of the urea, urea, which is ammonia, and that also has negative effects on seed emergence. So um, when we make those decisions in the spring, uh, the recommendations are for normal conditions um, when we have drought conditions or in this case there's some salinity effects here uh, now those actually uh, compound or exacerbate the problem so um, you're really the, the producers need to make that decision are we gonna have a dry year uh, you know are, are we can are we dealing with some salinity or are there other issues which will determine the amount of uh, fertilizer, in this case urea, that you will safely put with the seed. Sure, and we'll look at the plots here in a sec, Ken, but that's what we're saying is the ministry is saying 10 pounds in the seed row, but as we can see behind us here, we're working with some salinity at this specific plot, and so to actually half that has turned out better for this certain scenario, which is what you're... In, in this case, and it's not only the salinity, but the, the the real drought conditions. This area really didn't get a significant rain uh, till about three weeks ago. So um, maybe even less than that, about two weeks ago. So that will make the problem worse for sure. Okay. Uh, would it be recommended to producers if they're unsure, uh, if they don't want to see that poor emergence by that seed toxicity by putting too much in the seed row, would they be best to cut it in half and to maybe up the amounts that they're doing in that in that side band for the brown soil zone for sure because uh, your chances of drought and and you know other issues are, are probably a little bit higher than say the dark brown or the black soil zones um, and, and and yes the problem where the problem arises is where you've got a single shoot drill where you've got to put all your fertilizer down right you know as much as you can with the seed and those are the guys that are probably pushing the envelope um, the guys with double shoot or side band you know they're going to probably go uh, that, that can put the, the fertilizer mid row or side band, they're probably going to maybe go with the recommended rates and then up the fertilizer in the mid row or, or side band. Okay. And then also we've talked a little bit about salinity here in, in the soil out here in Swift, but what other soil types or how do different soil types act as a buffer against sea toxicity? So, so basically, uh, uh, Dark brown, black soil zones 
the, the color changes based on the amount of organic matter in the soil. And, and that's all a product of how the soil was formed and, and basically the amount of precipitation that these soils were subject to as they were forming from the parent material. So you got more organic matter, it's more forgiving, more, more moisture typically, it's more forgiving and that's why you can do, have those increased uh, rates of nitrogen with, with the seed. Great, thanks so much for joining us today, Ken. All right.